What is up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with a very exciting video as you can see because we get a first look at Pro Cycling Manager 2020 and before we really get into this video I do want to point out that this isn't the final build of the game so there are going to be more changes upon the full release which will be tomorrow when you see this video and so what that means is some features are not finished and some features may even be completely introduced in the final builds of the game. So this isn't the final build. This isn't a kind of review of the game. It's just a first look ahead of the full release tomorrow. So you can see that the kind of user interface in the menus is very similar. You will also notice that uh, kind of the titles of the years and the races are slightly off. This will be fixed for the final game, I believe. So stuff like this you can see it's not the final build of the game however to start let's just play the stage 20 from the 2019 tour de france from last season and just get into the gameplay so you can see i've just taken jumbo visma and we're going to try and win this stage with them and you can see plenty of attacks going off the front already and that is something i've definitely noticed about this game is that the ai seems to be much more aggressive in general and that is one of the features I'm going to discuss right now with you. So Nacon and Cyanide have said that AI are substantially more aggressive. That is kind of a new feature they have announced in this game. And it's definitely the case. So what they mean by this, as far as I can see, is that the AI are just much more unpredictable. So you can see attacks from much further out from the finish, potentially by leaders. You can see uh, more advanced AI in general, basically. So a good example I have for this is if we think back to Chris Froome at the 2018 Giro d'Italia, he attacked from ACK out. Uh, they whistled the group down to maybe five riders, three attacks, and of course he ended up gaining about three minutes on that stage. Examples like this, obviously you're not seeing that in every stage, I haven't seen it happen yet in the few hours I have played this game. However, I do feel there is the opportunity for something along those lines potentially to take place. Um, so that is very exciting to me, the AI much more aggressive, much more un uh, unpredictable as a whole so that's going to make single player all the modes pro cyclist career single races much more enjoyable i think so the next topic i want to discuss as we have about two minutes up to two riders up the road in this stage um, is time gaps now if you guys have watched any of my previous videos you'll probably know this is one of my biggest kind of frustrations with previous pcms the fact that if there is potentially a small gap at the finish line, they don't always count, particularly on flatter stages. And to me, in the few hours I have played again, this isn't a final review because I haven't played enough of the game and it's not the final build. However, it does seem to be much, much improved in this version of the game. And two examples I have of this is I played a Liège Baston Liège with Julian Alaphilippe and I attacked a few kilometers from the line, just about held off the sprinters. And I think I had a six second gap at the end and that counted in the final screen. I've also seen gaps on mountain stages down to three or four seconds. So you really need to be alongside a rider if you want to be in the same time gap as them, which to me is a massive, massive improvement. And what this means on maybe cobbled stages or even uh, windy stages trying to create echelons, they're going to be much more effective if you pull that off because the time gaps at the end are definitely going to count this time around. So you can see Stephen Kreuzvik has been pacing for these guys. We're down to just 11 at the very front. Um, we do have a few guys from Ineos still here, but you can see very select group of guys in this group as you see Remco Venepool's stats for the new game and we now do have attacks it would seem completely missed that from Simon Yates so we're going to try and bring this in of course let's ride with Doomland in fact I'll try a little attack up to him with Tom Doomland you can see we're really struggling for energy with all of our guys it would seem but trying to bring in Doomland I'll sit here with Roglic we won't do the chasing for this group uh, it seems Yates super super strong though so doesn't look like we're going to be able to take this stage at all Simon Yates very strong at the moment I'll just sit in with Bernal, Bardet, Pino and Quintana. Thomas out the back as well at this point. So I did just make the move to bridge to Doomland with Roglic, but you can see all our guys really struggling. And look how aggressive the AI are being right, uh, right here, guys. This is an example. You can see Yates attacking early. We have four riders working quite well together, it would seem, for now. 
in the group behind. I'm trying to bridge up to them, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be possible. We have a group of very select guys behind as well. Pogachar done already. Attacks in the group ahead as well, as we have Pino being dropped here. I think we're on for maybe a top five, but not really much more than that at this point in the stage. I'll try and catch Pino. You can see up the road, Yates, Quintana and Bernal seem to be the strongest on this climb. Into the final 2K of this stage then, let's try and push this with Roglic up to Bardet after relying on Pino for a little while. Into the final kilometers, up the road, Yates, Bernal and Quintana will fight for it as I mentioned. Let's go up to maybe 75, just pace to the line. Who's going to take it up the road? Yates drops Quintana, he drops Bernal and Simon Yates wins on Valterens. What a win. And you can see this small gap to Bernal. That will definitely count, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully we'll see some examples of this. You can see I'm just ahead of Bardet, Soler, Bookman, just behind. We have Lopez, Dumoulin and Pino as well. Martin with Nibley behind. Uh, yeah, let's see how these time gaps look at the end of this stage. So here we go. Yates ahead of the other guys. You can see the finish again here on the replay. Here we see on the podium and you can see Everyone bar Dumoulin and Pino in a different time gap. So Bardet, six seconds behind Roglic. Then we have Soler, four seconds back. Bookman, four seconds back. The only riders in the top 10 that were in the same time are Pino and Tom Dumoulin. And like I said, to me, this changes the game massively. This is an absolute game changer. You can see all the time gaps, everyone in different times. So this means any extra energy you have, you can really take advantage and capitalize by beating the AI. And the same goes for the AI beating you. If you're feeling slightly worse, you're going to pay for it. You can't just try and sneak into the same group as the other guys. But to me, the biggest advantage of these time gap changes are definitely going to be on flatter stages and echelon stages. This is going to make creating echelons in the winds so much more enjoyable in this game because previously you could have up to a minute or two minutes of guys in the same group as you on a flatter stage. That is not going to be the case anymore. And by the way, just so you guys know, this is a quick look at the settings and the settings I'm currently playing with. So we're on extreme. Uh, you can see the full settings right here. The same graphic settings presets. Uh, so yeah, this is the settings we're going for in this video. So we've had some mountain gameplay and I do believe it is time for some classics gameplay. So we're going to do a quick tour of Flanders. As you can see, crazy difficult parkours. I think it's the 2019 parkours actually. You do see some attacks off the front already, uh, but let's see how this race goes. So just a few kilometers into the race, but you can see quite a few riders trying to get into this breakaway. The likes of Oliveira, Jacobs, Haller, Fabio Jakobsen as well, so doesn't seem they're too keen for this break to go. So we do have an interesting dynamic right now, not really for me however, because Vanderpool did just fall, so we're in this group with a few guys who have dropped back. We're gonna have to drop another man back, and you can see the pace has exploded in the Peloton. They're trying to keep Vanderpool behind, and it seems they're going to do it as well. So as you can see right now, it's absolute chaos in the team. Guys have been dropped, guys, well behind, we are coming up to the Eau de Quarmont right now and you can see there's no breakaway left because they have been destroying the tempo trying to keep this man behind. So let's try and pace up to this group right now but it seems we're even going to struggle to get in on the Eau de Quarmont. So then I think we have a pretty perfect example of the new AI this game is offering. You can see there are 29 riders left at the front of the race pretty much because Matthew Vanderpool did puncture and we dropped two minutes and they just wouldn't let us back in. His race is now done. He's been given no chance because of a puncture. Of course, very unlucky. You can see attacks taking place already in the front group by big favorites like Trenton. So here we go then, more examples. Still we have these four riders at the front. Terpstra, Benut and Sagan behind. Burkhart was there to help Sagan as well. You can see Moscon attacking. Some guys are pacing, some attacking to try and join that group up the roads. I'm just going to sit in, of course, and see how this plays out. But we do have seven riders at the front and Peter Sagan straight onto the attack as well. 84k to go in the Tour of Flanders. 
So no one joins Sagan up the road. He's obviously going to be pretty tired and we're now down to 24 at the front. So that was the pace trying to catch Sagan. A few guys able to come back in as well with Van Aert and Van Mark caught behind. Uh, but you can see this group going to grow again to 44 riders. So 55k to go. This is where Vakoc will say goodbye to the guys at the front. Sagan, Gilbert, Stoven have been caught behind. And we have Yves Lampert, Terpstra, Askreen, Stebar, GVA and Trenton up the road with Narsen and Van Marka right at the front. So you can see the favourites completely spread out right now. So here we go, on to the Eau de Quarmont for the final climb. It seems Sagan, GVA, Van Mark, Sturven won't be strong enough to stay with Narsen and Kasper Askreen who look the strongest today. So into the final kilometre, we do have an attack from Narsen. He has attacked Askreen and he will take it. He attacked a few kilometres ago, hells it ahead of Askreen. Let's see if this time gap counts again across the line. We do have Sturven, Sagan, Van Mark sprinting for third place and GVA gets dropped right at the end there. There we go then and you can see this time gap does count to Askreen and Narsen. Seven seconds in the end. Plenty of time gaps again. But really the point of showing this race is that Vanderpool punctured and the AI were well aware that he is one of the favourites. They paced the way and just didn't let him back in at all to the point where a lot of guys were struggling as soon as they hit the first climb. So we've had a look at the mountains and the classics. Let's take a look at the sprint gameplay in this new game uh, on Champs Elysees. So as we approach the Arc de Triomphe for the final time, you can see preparing our sprint train. And although we have Caleb Ewan, probably the best sprinter in this game on the default database, 83 acceleration and 83 sprints. I wouldn't say we have the strongest lead out team. Uh, a lot of them not feeling too good as well. As you see the Arc de Triomphe looking fantastic in this game. Anyhow, let's see how we do into the final. You can see attacks taking place Michael Matthews is attacking and he is a decent sprinter. Again, very aggressive move by the AI. Here we go then, 9k to go to Ghent on the front and we have had a few attempts at attacks. I've just shut them down though. Let's use those energy gels, may as well, into the final eight kilometers as we have uh, another attack on the right hand side. Plenty of guys trying to be the first men into the final on Champs Elysees. Daniel Oss now moving up for Bora as well. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see under that tunnel. Anyhow, to Gents up to 99 right now, and I think we're going to have to use Kluger a bit early. Uh, I'm not sure why Mice is such a good sprinter. I would say Kluger is Ewan's lead out man. Anyhow, we'll up this to 90. Oss is still here towards the front of the race into the final few kilometers. And so two and a half K to go up to 99 with Kluger. You can see Sagan. We have Viviani here as well. We're going to have to sprint. Uh, I've gone, probably gone too late here. Hopefully we can take this with Caleb Ewan on the left hand side of the road. Gonna be difficult, Demar is coming, and I think we're just gonna take it ahead of Arnold Demar. Corbrelli was third in the end. We finally get a win in this video. So of course, I would say that sprints probably the thing that have changed the least. Uh, however, plenty of attacks to look out for. You could see we had numerous attacks into those final 10k and we had plenty beforehand as well, trying to get away. It's almost impossible on Champs-Élysées The AI still give it a go though. So guys, I've shown you the gameplay and that is what I'm going to focus on in this video. You can see I've loaded up a career right now. It looks very, very different, very excited by the new interface as a whole. You can see we have a morale tab here, showing them, of course, the morale of your riders, which changes the way they perform. Very exciting changes right there. We've got a little tab up here showing injured riders. Uh, you see the new teams. And also, when you obviously play some races, you can see the latest results in all of the races, even the ones you haven't raced in this tab right here. And you can see your emails right here as well, looking much cleaner, I would say, from the previous games. You can sort them by uh, type of email as well. Big change right there for me. And although there are plenty more changes in career modes, I just haven't played this mode enough to really tell you guys about it in detail. Uh, as I said, this isn't the final build. We don't have the final database, so we're unable to really start a proper career. So that's the reason we're not really gonna discuss this in this video. However, I will in a few days produce a proper review with career modes included as well as the other modes. However, something I'm sure a lot of you guys are looking to see is the stats of these riders. So I will show you briefly 
uh, a quick overview of the riders and their attributes. Personally, I will change this to a database like the World DB, where you have full names, updated attributes, and plenty more teams included as well. So I will probably do that at a later date when we're able to create a modded DB. However, these are the default stats. So I'll show you the best riders by each attribute. You can see the best flat riders right here. I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see the guys. Pernio Heisel is still up here with 77 flats. Best climbers, Bernal, Quintana, Pino. No surprises right there. You can see a few of the guys on the upper 70s as well. The best hill riders, of course, we have Alaphilippe, Roglic and Yates, very good on the hills. So is Lutsenko and Quieto, who I would say probably a bit too high considering his recent form. The best time trialists in the world, of course, we have Big Tom, Remco, 81 TT already at 19 years old. Look at this man's attributes. I think I mentioned him earlier, but utterly insane stats right there on Remco. The best cobblers, of course, we have Paris-Roubaix winner from last season, Phil Gilbert, we've got Sagan. You can see the other guys right here. The best sprinters, I think I mentioned it, we have Grunewagen and Ewan on 83 and you can see the guys into the upper 70s as well. The best downhillers in the world, of course, it has to be Mate Mohoric. We've got Sagan, Vanderpool on 84 as well. Not quite sure if he's known for his downhill, but there you go. You can see the most competitive riders, of course, goes to Thomas de Gent. The best riders by stamina as well. We have Gilbert, Vanderpool, Terpstra. You can imagine the type of guys up here. Resistance as well, Vanderpool, Alaphilippe. Very important attribute I consider resistance. Thomas de Gent on 80 resistance. I mean, the man is a beast. And the best riders at recovering in the Grand Tour, we have Bernal and Carapaz. Nice to see two guys that, of course, won a Grand Tour last season. So before finishing off this video, I do want to say you guys can win a copy of PCM20. All you need to do is head to my Twitter and there is a tweet right there. You just need to retweet it and follow me on Twitter for a chance to win PCM20. And the deadline will be the end of today, of course, the day that the video is uploaded. So make sure you go and do that for a chance to win PCM20. But yeah, I do hope that was an enjoyable first look for you guys. Obviously, I didn't really show you the game modes properly, such as career in depth, simply because we're really unable to do that to this point. So I apologize for that. Um, however, I hope you enjoyed looking at the gameplay, seeing the new time gaps, as well as the really enhanced AI, in my opinion. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. And of course, this year I will be uploading a lot of PCM20, including our T-Mobile Bianchi career. The trailer went up for that yesterday, and of course, we'll be trying to bring them back to the top of word cycling. I'll also have the redemption tour with Thibaut Pino, which will be coming out tomorrow. Looking forward to starting that as well. But anyhow, guys, drop a like on this video if you enjoyed today. Subscribe if you're new, and let me know if you're looking forward to playing PCM20. I will see you guys in the next one.